Hey friends, happy new years and welcome to this week's video. This week we are going over the Google Pixel Buds A series, small little package that I got on a promotion with my Pixel. So I figured I'd shoot out a review just to see if there's anything worthwhile or if it's just literally something they're trying to get rid of. So not much else to say, but let's get into specs. The Google Pixel Buds A series come packaged in a small box and include the basic accoutrements that you'd normally get with true wireless earbuds, like your manuals and charging cables. Since the wings are built in, there's no additional sizing for them, and the only way to customize your fit really comes down to the additional silicone tips provided. Overall, the experience is clean and very Google. <laughs> The case is fun sized and extremely easy to palm. The matte white finish is extremely attractive and feels nice to the touch. The back of the case has a sync button and can also be used to check the battery with the single LED on the front. This case is USB-C charging only, no wireless Qi charging here. In terms of the lid, it flits open very easily and has strong magnets to keep it shut. The build is simple, but it does feel solid. The only big issue I see here is it's somewhat slick and have dropped it quite a few times in my testing. Moving on to the earbuds, they're extremely light in ear and have large touchpads for controls. The fit is secured in with these stationary silicone wings. These earbuds are relatively durable, being sweat and splash resistant. They can handle some rough handling as well as quick pocketing when you're in a pinch. The earbuds also have strong magnets, so you don't have to worry about them slipping out of the case. The controls are relatively responsive, but have strict controls that you can't customize, which leaves some desired features like volume off the table for configuration. However, in-ear, while sitting down, they feel fine and snug. I will admit that you have to finagle around a little bit just to make sure you get the proper fit as these wings fit against the anti-helix of your ear rather than hooked into the conch of your ear like the Beats Fit Pro. This is especially obvious when working out. Due to how the wings sit in ear and the overall shape, I found that the earbud moves around with heavier sweat and movement. Not a ton, but enough where I felt myself adjusting or reseating the earbud through my sessions. I wasn't sure if it was actually slipping out or if I was just being paranoid, but it didn't feel secure all the time, especially when jumping. It's a little strange having a hook shape and it's not nestling into the conch. It's just hanging out to provide tension. And I think Google could have adapted a more true wing-like design like the Master and Dynamic MW07 if they wanted to build something for a fit inside the anti-helix. From a connectivity standpoint, these stood up all right for what they are. Pretty solid connectivity with no drops if the phone was nearby. However, at range, I was not able to fully test this because of weather and travel issues, but I was able to get about 50 feet in a wide open area without things getting skippy or distorted. It's not the most rangy headset out there, but at 99 bucks, it, it gets the job done. So in terms of active noise cancelling and transparent sound, you really don't have that sort of flexibility which other earbuds have. In reality, what is present here is just the passive isolation as well as a feature called adaptive sound that is in the menu for Google. And what that does essentially is it listens to your surroundings and adjusts that sound according to what it hears. So you don't really have control over if it increases or decreases volume, but it will make those determinations. So if it's louder outside, it'll try to amp up that volume so that you can kind of get that isolation and hear your music properly. But when you're in a quieter setting, it will you know, let some of that volume adjust accordingly so you're not blasting out your ears and you can still hear everything clearly. While it's a good thought, it just doesn't give me the control that I want. In a quiet setting, sometimes I want to have more volume just so I can block out the, the white noise. Or maybe I want transparency and be able to hear like everything so I can hear like if a conversation is happening. Conversely, if I'm on the subway, Yes, it's, it's, it's admirable to try to block out that noise because it's annoying, but at the same way, I want to be able to hear my surroundings. I want to hear someone's coming at me if there is someone coming up on a bike when I'm getting out and things like that, that I need to have my surroundings present. So adaptive sound, just having the, the program figure out what I want is not great. 
However, if they were able to adapt that sound, like let's say if I was in transparency mode or something like that, then that'd be cooler. But just having an all-in-one sort of one setting to me is extremely limiting. Yo, so update on this adaptive volume. It's super annoying. Just walking down the street, there's, it's just coming in and out. I don't know why, I was just running doing errands, you know, returning packages, all that sort of stuff, and it's not consistent at all. And it's really jarring because you'll just randomly hear your volume drop and then increase all of a sudden. Just not ideal. So the, fe the feature definitely needs tweaking, but I would say that you might be able to live with it, but not something that I would want on my headphone on the day to day. So. I think that's all my thoughts on that. Let me just go into some live samples so that you guys can see how this sounds. Again, we'll start with a passive and then I'll do my best to give you an understanding of what this sounds like as it adjusts. But uh, it's going to be a little bit different than normal, so bear with me. Hey guys, um, I don't really have much time to record, just the lounge is closing, as you heard, um, but hopefully this gives you a good understanding of what this sounds like indoors. There's some background noise going in the background, obviously, when you be in a lounge, but hopefully that's not interfering with what you guys are feeling. Obviously, I also have a mask on, so they may not be as clear as you'd normally hear on a phone call, but hopefully this gives you, you know, a good understanding of indoor performance of these microphones. And then if I land, I'll do an outdoor one so you guys get an understanding of that as well. So I thought it was only fair to get an indoor recording when there's no mask, no airport, just, you know, how this would sound if you were hanging out at home and talking to your friends or on calls for work. So overall, I could say that this is probably not the best for conferencing. There's a noticeable quality change when I go between headphones and my clients noticed it. They said that these sounded very tinny and less clear, less natural. Um, and more robotic. So you guys can tell me how this sounds, but my clients weren't very impressed by this, especially because they've gotten so used to me using like the Master Dynamics, the Beats Fit Pro, and the Sound Cores, which just sound tremendously more clear, and the mics are a little bit more accurate to your voice. So they noticed the difference, especially when these died. So I got about two hours out of these on talk time. It's, it really had two and a half, but it was pretty consistently two hours for me. So you could probably get through a couple of meetings, um, if in your case, in my case, at least one meeting and then it would die. So I obviously switched to one of the other earbuds I've had and then the clients were like, it's much better. So you may have variable success with these, but I haven't had that much in terms of it, just in terms of longevity and quality. There's a lot of better options out there, but let's finally move on to the outdoor sample so you guys can hear how this sounds when there's a lot more stuff going on in the background. All right. So this is a recording on the Pixel Buds A series with a bunch of wind going on outdoors. So let me know what you guys hear in the comments, but from what I've heard outside, it's not the most pleasant for the person on the other side. So I'm imagining you guys are getting a lot of feedback right now. But I did want to make sure that we did do an outdoor recording so you guys got to hear this firsthand. <laughs> I am super sorry about this recording if it's terrible, but if it holds up, I'd be extremely surprised. So, in terms of sound, 
coming out of the box they were extremely tinny and i was not really pleased with it it was you know just very very high end and somewhat mid focused and there was really no low end for me to to ride home about so that was really discouraging but after i synced it up had it show up in the settings of my bluetooth since i do have a pixel there's an integration there i was able to go into the eq and adjust the bass and that's all you can adjust in that eq is just the bass i think there's like five or six notches in there where you can slide that up and i did try like a song on each level but really i wasn't getting the low end that i needed until like the second to last notch um, so at that point, the sound was a little bit more well-rounded. Again, the, the highs were relatively clear. The mids were all right. They weren't as at any, they, there's no detail there to really get excited about. And then the low end was better, but it was muddy. So overall, the signature sound signature, even with that added low end, was not ideal. Uh, I don't know exactly how I would be able to justify that. At $99, I would expect a little bit better since there's so much competition out there, um, like the earphones and a bunch of other options out there that would sound better. And this is like one of those instances where, you know, save 30 bucks and get the sound cores because those will sound tremendously better than these. Um, but yeah, there wasn't that much I could do in terms of the application or sorry, the integration or the EQ to really get more out of these. There was just, a lot missing from it but i think you probably should listen to it for yourself so that you guys can see what i experienced uh i'm gonna do my best to find a good song for these but you may not like things but have a listen So in terms of a recommendation for the Pixel Buds A series, if you get them on promotion, I will say that they're not bad to have around. They are a very nice small package and very easy to pocket. So they're a good kind of backup if things die or, you know, something happens with your main set. It's good to have as a backup just to make sure you're always listening to something. However, if you are actually trying to buy this at retail, I can't recommend them. There are a lot of things that are good about it in terms of the integration with Google, you know, relative fit, sort of sound to an extent, but nothing's really excelling here. And I think at some point, at any price range, the earbud has to excel at something. And really, this is kind of just stuck in the middle or just even lower end from what I'm feeling from my experience so far. So again, if you get on promotion for free, obviously it's no skin off your back, but if you're trying to get this at retail, there's just a ton of other competitors out there that are gonna have better ANC, better sound quality, better fit, a bunch of different things. Like again, they'll excel at something at that price range. Not everything, but you might find a better well-rounded earbud than the Pixels. So I like to promote Google products. It's just unfortunately I can't for this one. So um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna be going over more of those budget options. I know this channel has been predominantly around like the sort of mid-range and high-end earbuds and audio devices, but I do wanna make sure that I am trickling in some other lower end things, some budget stuff that's easier to grab, especially for if people are considering gifts or they just don't have the cash on them right now to the holidays. Um, I wanna make sure that I can make some content around that so you guys have my perspective on some of those easier to grab options. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, I'm also trying to bring in more content around, you know, 
things that are non-sex so just keep everything really really fresh going into the new year and uh hopefully you guys want to stick around with me i do appreciate all of you that have been helping grow the channel we are starting off really really strong into the new year at a, like just under 1300 subscribers i'm definitely trying to grow the channel pretty aggressively this year if i can keep up with the content so if you are interested in seeing how this grows or just like the content please consider liking subscribing commenting doing all the things you normally do on a video that you like and love and i'm gonna try to get through all of your guys' requests as much as fast as possible you guys gave me a ton over the holidays and I've had some in the backlog already so it might take me a couple months to get through those but then after that I would do want to go into some of the more budget options that I mentioned before um, but I appreciate you guys sticking with me and being kind of here while I sort of catch up on my schedule to the new year with work and all this other stuff but I definitely want to keep in, in contact with you guys so definitely hit me up on all my socials if you guys have questions or have requests I'm uh, definitely open to talk to you guys on those forums but uh yeah other than that, I will probably see you next week. Uh, hopefully, uh, you guys have had a, had a great holiday, but as always, appreciate you. Peace.